Coming up today, with emotions running high, Korea urges Japan to avoid causing misunderstanding over their recent sex slavery settlement so they can build stronger ties going forward. Face masks at the ready. Korea is forecast to be hit with a blanket of fine dust and heavy smog from China on this New Year's Eve. Plus, NASA warns the current El Nino is still growing and could rival the record 1997 event, which caused weather-related chaos around the world. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Thursday, December 31st here in Seoul. Thank you ever so much for joining us on this New Year's Eve morning. I'm Mark Broom. And our top story this morning, Korea's foreign minister is calling on Japan to avoid statements that could lead to misunderstanding about the recently agreed deal on Japan's wartime sex slavery. Yoon Byung-se says the two sides should build trust through that agreement. Gon Soa starts us off. It was a year and eight months of strenuous negotiations, is what Korea's foreign minister Yoon Byung-se told reporters Wednesday on the recent landmark settlement with Japan. Although the two governments are now in compromise when it comes to the responsibility, apology and compensation regarding Japan's sexual enslavement of Korean women before and during World War II, Minister Yoon said there are likely forces in Japan that could interpret the contents of the agreement for their own interests. That's why he urged Japan to convince those groups well and refrain from any wordings or actions that could set off misunderstandings. This, as Japanese media have been making false reports, such as Korea willing to move its statue of a girl representing the so-called comfort women across the Japanese embassy in Seoul, even saying that if Korea does not move it, it will be a violation of the bilateral agreement. The embassy is also the place where hundreds of people took part at a weekly rally Wednesday with the elderly women as they do not accept the deal, saying Japan did not take legal responsibility for their wartime atrocity. Minister Yoon also mentioned Wednesday that while Korea has diplomatic ties with the majority of the 193 United Nations members, the most difficult relationship is that with Japan, adding that once a challenging issue has been settled, constraints are bound to be taken into account. Minister Yoon said the issue of Japan's wartime sex slavery was the most difficult one between the two countries. And what's important now is for the agreement to be executed swiftly so the two countries can build confidence in one another. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Now, experts are warning that the death this week of a senior North Korean official could negatively impact inter-Korean relations. The North state-run media announced Kim Yang-gon's death on Wednesday. Connie Kim reports. Kim Yang-gon, a high-ranking North Korean official in charge of inter-Korean affairs, died in a car accident in the early hours of Tuesday. Kim's death was reported Wednesday by North Korea's Korean Central News Agency. Kim Yong-gon, secretary of the ruling Workers' Party of Korea, passed away on December 29th at 6.15 a.m. at the age of 73 from a car accident. The North State News Agency also said Kim Jong-un will lead a state funeral for the deceased on Thursday. No further details were released. Kim Yong-gon was a secretary of the ruling Workers' Party of Korea and a member of the party's Central Committee Politburo. But he was perhaps best known as the head of the North's United Front Department, which handles inter-Korean affairs. He played a key role in pulling the two Koreas back from the brink of conflict after North Korea's landmine explosion near the inter-Korean border in August. Seoul's Unification Ministry offered its condolences on Wednesday. The government has offered its condolences for the death of Kim, who contributed to a meaningful agreement at the August talks. Kim was considered a dove in handling of cross-border affairs, and the general consensus seems to be that not only will it be challenging to find someone to take his place, but inter-Korean dialogue could deteriorate in the short term.
There is a possibility that problems will arise from the absence of a person with Kim's knowledge and experience when it comes to negotiating specific pending issues. Minor things could have a negative impact on the big picture. Speculation has already begun about who will take Kim's place. The list of possible candidates includes Won dong yeon the deputy chief of North Korea's United Front Department, who participated in a high-level inter-Korean meeting in February 2014, and Choi Ryong-hae, a senior ruling party secretary who had been out of the public eye, but has been listed as a member of the funeral organizing committee, implying he has been reinstated. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Now, North Korea will hold a state funeral for Kim Jong-un on this Thursday, and it's an occasion bestowed to few in the North, which testifies to the significance of Kim's contributions to the regime. For a closer look at the man seen as dovish in his handling of inter-Korean affairs, Kim Hyun bin reports. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un vowed to hold a state funeral for Kim Jong-un on Thursday. According to North Korea's Korean Central News Agency on Wednesday, the late Kim was called the closest comrade in arms of the communist leader, Kim Jong-un. Pyongyang announced a list of top 70 attendees to Kim's funeral scheduled for Thursday, and the names include senior secretary of the ruling party, Choi ryong hae who ranks sixth in the power hierarchy. Choi was exiled to a rural farm for mishandling a newly built hydroelectric power plant project back in November. The ranking is not important because it goes up and down. But what matters is the fact that Choi ryong hae has been reinstated. His foreign relations abilities were probably highly considered, so it could be expected Choi to take over inter-Korean affairs after Kim. Kim yang was a top official in handling inter-Korean affairs since the father of current leader Kim Jong-il. Kim yang was named the head of the communist regime's United Front Department in 2007 which handles inter-Korean relations. He contributed in organizing a summit between former North Korean leader Kim Jong-il and then South Korean President Noh Mui Hun in October 2007. He also was one of the two North Korean representatives during the high-level talks that took place between the two Koreas after landmine blasted on the inter-Korean border, provoked by the North. He was also among the three high-ranking North Korean officials who attended the closing ceremony of the 2014 Incheon Asian Games. The South Korean military said that there hasn't been any signs of unusual activities from the North on the military front, adding that North Korean soldiers engaged in annual winter training as previous years. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Now, staying in North Korea, and recent satellite imagery shows the regime is forging ahead with the excavation of a new tunnel at its Pungeri nuclear test site. North Korea monitoring website 38 North released on Wednesday the new high-resolution imagery taken in early December. It explained that the presence of mining cart tracks shows excavation work is underway, but there's no indication of when it will be completed. The website added, new activity has also been identified at a spoil bank created by the excavation of the tunnel at the North Portal, which has been underway, in fact, since May 2013. Still, it remains unclear whether the activity is associated with maintenance or some other purpose. For several days now, large swathes of northeastern China have been blanketed in a thick layer of heavy smog. And on this Thursday, the last day of 2015, a cloud of fine dust will affect the Korean peninsula as northwesterly winds are forecast to carry the smog over from China. Therefore, air quality is likely to be bad across most of the country throughout the day, unfortunately, including uh, the West Coast. So those of you planning to watch the last sunset of the year in Korea are advised to take the necessary precautions, sh such as wearing a face mask like the, that man there. Uh, weather authorities say strong winds will help disperse the smog from New Year's Day. Now, it's being dubbed by some, at least, as the Godzilla of all El Ninos. NASA has warned that this year's El Nino is still growing and could end up being as strong as the most destructive one ever recorded in late 1997. NASA says a new satellite image of the weather system bears a striking resemblance to the one from December 1997, which was blamed for extreme uh, weather, including... Uh, record rainfall in California and Peru, heat waves across Australia and fires in Indonesia. 
The intense weather is estimated to have caused well over 20,000 deaths in 1997 and 1998. Aid agency Oxfam International says this year's El Nino could leave tens of millions of people facing hunger, water shortages and disease in 2016 if early action isn't taken to prepare vulnerable people from its effects. Now, the task of redrawing Korea's electoral map is still on lawmakers' to-do list, and they don't have much time now to get it done. It is hoped that a compromise can be reached at the 11th hour to avoid a potentially chaotic situation for candidates who have already registered for general elections set for the spring. Shin Se-min has the details. The National Assembly passed 47 bills on Monday, but left a raft of other more contentious bills up in the air. Lawmakers also have yet to resolve the matter of redrawing Korea's electoral map before the current one expires at the end of the year. That could cause major problems for candidates registering for an upcoming general election in April who could see their districts eliminated when a new map is drawn. Tomorrow is the last day of the year, and with the redistricting issue still unresolved, we expect there to be chaos among the candidates starting in the new year. The National Election Commission said Wednesday it'll allow candidates to campaign temporarily, even if the electoral map hasn't been finalized. The election watchdog also said if the two main rival parties fail to compromise on the issue by January 8th, the end of the current extraordinary session, the NEC will have no choice but to come up with its own plan. The NEC says as of Wednesday at noon, there are 768 candidates registered, which is a ratio of 3.1 to 1 based on the current number of parliament receipts. But that number is likely to rise as registration continues through March. But the constituency issue is just one of many pending matters on the table. At the session on Monday, a total of 47 bills were passed, an outcome of multiple discussions following on a strong desire to see the bills go through, and we expect similar results with greater cooperation. With the clock winding down on 2015, there isn't much time left. And with the National Assembly Speaker Chong Yi-hwa indicating that he will not use his authority to table the constituency issue, it's only left on the hands of the rival lawmakers to draw up on the country's electoral map. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Now, more and more Koreans are earning more than 100 million won a year. And that's great news for them, as uh, 85,000 US dollars can go a pretty long way here. But while it's OK toward the top, it isn't that great at the lower end of the pay bracket. Lee Soon has this report. More than 500,000 workers in Korea earned more than 100 million won a year in 2014. The nine-figure salary amounts to around 85,000 U.S. dollars. On Wednesday, the National Tax Service said in a report that the number of nine-figure annual salary workers in 2014 amounted to 526,000, up almost 88 percent from 2010. The overall average salary also steadily grew since 2010, up 21 percent from 22.2 thousand U.S. dollars in 2010 to 27.1 thousand dollars in 2014. However, the growth rate of the overall average salary has been on a downslide since 2011, with Korea's economic growth slowing down. Moreover, the numbers didn't include short-term workers who are often paid less than regular workers. Only laborers who have worked over three months and not short-term shifts, such as one-day shifts, have been included in the overall average salary. The industrial city of Ulsan recorded the highest salary average at $34,500, whereas the tourist island of Jeju recorded the lowest at $22,700. Seoul's workers averaged around $30,000 of salary. With the gap between the rich and the middle class widening, ordinary Korean people will have to tighten their belts a little more while they wish for a future with that nine-figure salary. Lee Soon, Arirang News.
Well, that's pretty much all we have for now. Uh, I'm Mark Broom, and thank you ever so much for joining us throughout the entirety of 2015. It really has been a pleasure bringing you all the news uh, on what has been a very eventful year. On behalf of the entire news team here at Adirang TV, we want to wish you all a very happy new year and best wishes for 2016. We'll see you later. Goodbye.